Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never practice nunchucks in a crowded room. Never eat chole before a road trip. Always take your shirt off before you iron it. Don't take a call near a swimming pool. And don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. Hello and welcome to this episode of Macro Sutra. I'm TCA Sharad Raghavan, Deputy Editor at The Print. And this time we have actually a set of good news to talk about. A lot of international agencies have been upgrading their growth projections for India. They've also mentioned some elements of concern, but the highlight is that they've been upgrading the growth numbers and we emerge again as the fastest growing economy in the world, a major economy that is, and that we're one of the few bright spots. So to discuss all of this, as always, we have with us Radhika Pandey, Associate Professor at NIPFP. Thank you, Radhika, for joining us. So now, Radhika, let's start with first, which are the major agencies that have done this, that have revised our growth upwards? Yeah, so in the month of April, there have been three reports that have revised the uh, uh, growth projections for India upwards. Uh, the most recent is the IMF's World Economic Outlook. We know that it's a flagship publication by the International Monetary Fund, which comes twice a year, as well as there's a January update. So right. April is another uh, flagship publication where uh, the IMF has raised India's growth projection for the current financial year, that mm -hmm. is FY25, uh, to 6.8%. Uh, earlier in the January update, the projection for the same year was 6.5. Right. Now it is 6.8. So there is an upward revision of 0.3 percentage points. Which is quite significant. Which is quite significant. In a matter of three months, it's hmm. quite significant. Uh, then the next is the Asian Development Bank's report. Again, they come up with their Asia Development Outlook, which is called ADO. And uh, there it's primarily focused on uh, Asia's uh, growth prospects. So there also the uh, Asian Development Outlook has revised in India's growth projection uh, to 7%. So again, there okay. is a uh, from 6.7% to 7%. So the by the same year. amount, they've increased it. Yes, again, same amount. And then the last important report is by the World Bank. The World Bank came up with a South Asia update. So they come up with regional uh, updates, right. uh, dedicated reports on region. So this is a South Asia update report. And there also they have raised India's growth projection from uh, uh, by 0.2 percentage points earlier it was 6.4 now it is 6.6 .6 for the current financial year that is fy25 so uh, most of the reports that we come across we've seen that there has been an upward revision of 0.2 to 0.3 percentage points right so now the fact that all of them seem to agree that our growth is going to be faster by more or less the same amount right is that is based on anything yeah so they give the, the they talk about the driver so mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes the drivers are common sometimes the drivers are quite distinct that they are focusing on right. particularly the imf says that uh, the the sharp the boost to growth is coming from uh, recovery in demand and from increase in india's working age population so these are the two factors they attribute to the revision in growth okay. whereas if we look at the asia development bank uh, report they are talking about again they are talking about demand, but they are more specific. They say that it's a recovery in consumption, it's an improvement in exports, and also the, the uh, investment. So they are talking. They are, they are mostly talking about a, a broad-based growth. That there are uh, various drivers of growth, and those uh, drivers which were till now uh, slowing down, we are seeing some uh, improvement. So particularly exports and consumption. So that, that is the uh, driver discussed in the ADO report. And the World Bank says that, you know, out of the entire South Asian region, the whatever growth is happening is attributed to India only, right. uh, which is correct. Uh, the other regions like Bangladesh, Nepal, Afghanistan, their growth is even below the pre-pandemic average. And in India also, but they say that in India also growth is driven by public investment. They which we've down, talked about. Which we've talked about. Yeah. They lay down a host of policy prescriptions descriptions uh, to ensure that this growth is more uh, broad based and sustained. But yes, there are these different drivers of growth being talked about by different uh, reports, they lay emphasis on different factors. Okay, but now for all of these factors, things like demand and private investment and consumption, I can see how over three months, since this, these numbers come out regularly, how over three months, 
the picture might have changed right but about our demographics how yeah. is the imf saying that because of our working age population also they are upgrading our growth because um it's not like our population suddenly exploded yeah, in 3 months right absolutely correct correct that's there so they are attributing this factor that you know because there is a as compared to other countries like it mm-hmm. because it's a relative you know it's a relative study there are other countries like if we see greece and others uh, other countries there there has been a population collapse here we are seeing that the, there is a working age population and the uh, consistently increasing share of working population is something that will drive growth in the short to medium term that's what they are saying I see. now that is again something you know we can uh, debate that that by itself it's not a factor unless mm-hmm. it gets translated into gainful employment opportunity right. and it's a very small window but yeah this is what it's it's just a very uh, you know brief uh, discussion on india's growth but these are the two factors that they talk about and in fact in our last episode itself uh, we were talking about how the quality of em- uh, employment in india has actually been falling right so that i guess is uh, a yeah. concern yes but uh, now zooming out from india and moving towards the developed world right there's been this fear uh, i mean uh, a lot of it has been a valid fear yeah. but there's been a fear that the developed world the economies are slowing down and they'll actually pull the global economy into a recession right now what is the update on this yeah so there ha- there has been a significant change in that outlook because mm-hmm. uh, till um, uh, last year when we were talking about the global growth drivers we were saying that because of the slowdown in advanced economies global growth is likely to remain subdued and right. it's the uh, emerging markets and developed uh, developing economies that will uh, pull push growth forward mm-hmm. but now what we are seeing is that advanced economies have exhibited resilience it's not that they have sunk into a recession particularly us 2022 there was this uh, very uh, dominant narrative that the us economy is going to slip into recession right. there were these projection that you know in the second half it will slip or in the fourth quarter it will slip into recession but that did not materialize mm-hmm. and that is a major factor that has led to the global growth projections being stable we don't see a deceleration in global growth projection in fact there is a slight improvement in uh, global growth projection despite the interest rate hike so there was this uh, concern that due to high uh, interest rates there will be increase in borrowing costs and that will lead to uh, demand subdue uh, lead to a decline in demand and that will uh, you know lead to lower growth so or there will be concerns about stagflation recession but all those did not happen principally because of two reason firstly that you know households uh, used their accumulated previously accumulated saving uh, right. to tide over this period of higher interest rates so higher interest rate did not pinch at least the households very much why because they had uh, uh, savings accumulated during the covid time and that was mainly because of the kind of expansionary fiscal stimulus that was provided by governments of advanced economies during covid time they just gave them money they just gave them money yeah. so people had money but that time they could not spend right. and then in 22 uh, 2022 2023 they could spend so hmm. they could spend without uh, you know uh, uh, undergoing the impact of rise in interest costs and that resulted in growth remaining uh, you know uh, resilient so household spending was one thing that drove growth and that is one thing and the other thing is that employment remained quite robust we've talked about earlier also that you in the us particularly the labor market is still going strong so these were right. the two drivers of growth in uh, advanced economies in the us that did not uh, result in these economies falling into recession and that is resulting in global growth being moving at a stable pace and not deceleration decelerating because of the rise in interest rates right okay and uh, but now moving to the emerging markets and right. developed economies where uh, there was quite a lot of hope that this region is what is going to drive right. global growth yeah. but from what you're saying it's only india it's only india so yeah so if we look at the emerging markets and developing economies the way the imf looks at it is is that this emerging asia within the right. emdes emerging mm-hmm. markets and developing economies one big chunk is the uh, emerging asia which mainly includes india and china so while india's growth remains strong though there is a decline from so the last year fy24 right. imf uh, has projected a growth or estimated a growth of 7.8% which is even higher than the 
NSF's growth. Right. Because the second advance estimate suggested that the growth for FY24 will be 7.6. According to IMF, it, it is 7.8. So from 7.8, it is 6.8, which is still strong. But for China, there has been a sharp decline in the projection for growth. And that is the reason that has uh, uh, pulled down the uh, developing Asia, the emerging and developing right. Asia component of the emerging market and developing economy. The other components have slightly risen. So again, the growth has been slight dip from 4.3% to 4.2% for the uh, whole uh, group as, a, as such, right. e emerging markets and developing economies. So while um, uh, advanced economy, there's a slight uptake for EMD, there's a slight deceleration, mainly driven by the protracted uh, crisis of the property sector in China. Yeah. And because, I mean, of course, China being such a large economy, it, yeah. it, it can pull down the entire region. Entire region. And we can talk about the various transmission channels through which it will pull down. Yeah, right. Yeah. So why, why not? Let's get into that. I mean, how, what are the various ways? Because this, of course, will also impact India. So Absolutely. what are the various ways that yeah. China can slow us yeah. down? So there are various channels. One is that, you know, uh, another thing is that China is facing a elevated debt. Debt to deficit right. ratio is also quite high in China, mainly because uh, the governments have been giving a lot lot of stimulus packages to boost the economy, to ensure that the economy comes out of this uh, phase of uh, slowdown and mm -hmm. uh, low confidence where people are not spending. So if we look at the global uh, debt uh, to GDP ratio, it has risen again mainly because of the US and China. And if we uh, talk about China, if China's debt to GDP ratio rises and if China slows down, uh, China is one of the major sources of demand uh, for commodities. You know, about 60% right of the imports of commodities like metals, aluminium, all these soya bean, these, these are demanded by China. So if these, if China slows down, the demand for these commodities will slow down okay. and the uh, revenues of commodity exporting countries will come down. So it will have a spillover impact on the other, uh, the, the trading partners of China, those who right. depend on China for their exports for their uh, demand of uh, exports. That is one uh, channel. The other is that China is one of the important uh, uh, sources of uh, debt, bilateral debt to a number of countries. Right. Other than right. the IMF, the multilateral debt, China is also an important uh, source of uh, 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 debt. So that will dry up if this happens. Mm. And third is that China is also an important source of outbound direct investment to a number of countries, particularly the African countries. China uh, uh, provides the source of investment. So there will be drying up of external financing conditions in these countries. So those are, you know, uh, principally the uh, various channels through which if anything happens in China, that is not just restricted to China, be it a higher debt to deficits, higher uh, or uh, slowdown in growth. It's not just that it's a idiosyncratic event only limited to China. It will have spillover impact on global economy. No, of course. And uh, now, India, our, our uh, trade relations with China are mostly that we import what they have to export. Yes. Is that likely to get impacted if China slows down? Yeah, that will get impacted because we import a lot of, uh, you know, the, uh, a lot of industrial raw materials, as we've right. spoken about earlier, also a lot of the uh, the raw material, the APIs for pharmaceuticals, they come from right. China. So that will have an uh, impact. We also export to China. So it's not China's slowdown is not a good news for any uh, economy. Absolutely. So, because it is an important uh, uh, player in the overall global trade. And if China slows down, the entire overall trade uh, volume of trade will suffer. Right. Absolutely. We've talked about this before that uh, China's misfortunes are not good news for us or for really for any country in the global economy. Now, so we know that the developed countries are largely doing better than we thought. All the, the Asian and emerging markets, except for China, are doing somewhat better right. than earlier. Right. India is set to do better. But not everything is rosy and right. good news, right? Yeah. The, these reports have raised some issues. And surely things like the Russia-Ukraine war, Israel-Hamas, and now Israel-Iran, 
all of these things will continue to weigh on growth prospects yeah they will because you know the the underlying premise for the improvement in growth prospects has been the easing of inflation you know Correct. the main that is the main assumption that now inflation is easing uh, from the peaks that we saw in 2022 and we've seen that in the data that inflation is easing so now if there is there are these uh, fresh disturbances there this uh, latest is the iran attack uh, on israel and if this continues now mm -hmm. we have the Red Sea crisis. We have the Russia-Ukraine war, which is ongoing, and now we have another set of disturbance. So all these cumulatively will lead to uh, a higher uh, global crude oil prices, higher commodity prices, and that will uh, weigh on the in, uh, inflation of uh, various countries, and that will have an impact on the interest rate decisions of a number of countries because uh, right. they will delay their interest rate uh, cuts. A lot of the you know there's a lot of assumptions that have been uh, uh, a lot of uh, assumptions based on interest rate cuts happening this year Correct. now all those assumptions are you know being postponed now there is some people are saying that uh, at least in india interest rate cuts are off the table for this year even mm. in the us the probability of interest rate cuts is slowly diminishing the uh, 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 governor uh, himself made this statement two days back that you know because of inflation remaining elevated we need to keep interest rates higher for longer so and if interest rates remain higher for longer that will weigh on uh, growth that because that will uh, lead to uh, increase in uh, costs of borrowing because now right. the household savings are also getting depleted so now the the uh, uh, tight monetary policy will start pinching household budget it will start pinching the uh, corporate uh, borrowing Absolutely. there could be an increase in corporate delinquencies so uh, again so that could lead to a, a cyclical uh, growth downturn so all these assumptions all these growth projections that we are talking about they are based on the fact that we don't see any uh, further uh, disturbance but we are uh, seeing so that is one uh, uh, major headwind and the other headwind we talked about was the debt and deficit debt levels, levels yeah. you know, and that's another uh, uh, concern that has been raised by the IMF's uh, fiscal monitor that's another report that came out uh, uh, two days back which gives us a comprehensive picture of the debt and deficit levels in the uh, global economy mm -hmm. uh, it's a very interesting report because it tells us about the uh, uh, general government public debt to GDP ratio right. and also the uh, fiscal deficits the primary deficit deficits of a number of countries and there what we see the key highlight is that you know uh, in uh, during covid year there was a big uh, jump in the debt to gdp ratio yes it uh, overall global debt to gdp ratio almost touched 100% next two years there was an improvement in debt to gdp ratio it was coming down but right. in 2023 again there was a but rise in debt to gdp ratio so the mm. progress that we saw in debt to gdp ratio uh, was stalled in 2023 and though uh, and if we look at the projections by the fiscal monitor uh, they they present uh, a pessimistic picture on that front because these debt to gdp ratios are like to remain elevated and interest rates are high interest rates are high so right. that will compound the problem yes. that will aggravate the problem so uh, so those are the two factors and again debt to gdp ratio is high uh, mainly because of us and china and if we've right. talked about us we can also talk about uh, so we talked about china and in us also if uh, debt is high it will lead to higher bond yields and we've talked about Correct. the impact of us bond yields on all the other uh, countries because for example india's bond yield mirrors whatever is happening in the us bond yield so if the us bond yield tends to rise again there will be a reversal of uh, uh, fund from uh, india, india to the to us, the US yeah. we saw 2023 was a good year because we had 29 percent return fpis were buyers mm. that thing uh, could again change because the uh, the, the uh, bond deals in the us will likely remain elevated because of the right, higher correct. debt and deficit ratio so these are the various concerns mainly the debt to gdp ratio the 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 various uh, geopolitical disturbances that we are seeing mm -hmm. which will have an impact on uh, inflation and will delay the rate cut cycle which will have an impact on the defaults and the household budget right.
and also if if our uh, bond yields kind of mirror what's happening in the right. us then if ours also rise yes. then it makes it more expensive for the government to government borrow to borrow and if government uh, becomes more expensive it becomes expensive for the corporates to borrow right. because government bond uh, is the benchmark for the companies borrowing and we saw in 2023 all of this was uh, good news because uh, corporate bond yields were also low mm -hmm. and 2023 was a very good year for corporate bond issuances as well lot of companies tapped the bond market because of uh, the uh, lower interest costs right so uh, this gives you quite an idea of you know when people talk about globalization and interconnected markets this gives you an idea of exactly what that means how something happening on the other side of the world can actually impact you in your house Yeah. it can affect something like you know your borrowing costs you go for a loan things could become more expensive for you in the near future so these are all uh, big headwinds but uh, we also have an audience question uh, from dev he asks uh, in your expert opinion is india's growth so that's the 6.8 that they projected is it good considering the various crises going on in the world and or is it less given that india is a developing nation and more is expected from us do you think if things were normal in the world india would have done much better maybe double digit growth so if things would have been normal definitely the expectation would have been higher and we have this aspiration of becoming a, a developed country by 2047 that requires us to grow consistently at 9 to 10% right so uh, but given all those uh, the headwinds that we've spoken about given the uh, possible slowdown in uh, exports that we've spoken about i think uh, you know 7 to 8% is a, a good growth and we need to sustain it but along with the uh, these you know headwinds that we are facing there are a lot of uh, friction that are there within the economy that need to be addressed to ensure a higher potential growth you know we should strive right. to ach achieve a higher potential uh, gdp growth and the the various uh, reforms that are needed in the medium to long term uh, those need to be addressed at this point in time to mm -hmm. ensure that uh, once these uh, you know disturbances these headwinds abate we get back to the path of higher long uh, long term growth right. and those are you know we spoken about the uh, working age population but that needs to to be translated into gainful employment we need to increase the labor force participation rate of uh, uh, the, uh, the women and we need to improve the skill set so these are some of the factors and also you know we focused on product markets we need to now focus on factor markets we need to make our labor market right. our land all these uh, factor markets much more uh, flexible make our investments more flexible private investment needs to pick up so all these host of structural factors that you know uh, will help in boosting growth in the medium to long term they need to be worked on so the headwinds the external headwinds is not in our control but uh, you know these measures need to be continued to be uh, undertaken so that we get on to the path of higher long term growth as soon as possible no absolutely so uh, there you go that's the the broad picture india still remains a bright spot in the global economy our growth has been upgraded by several international agencies in the span of just 3 months and so that's that's quite significant at the same time the developed world is not doing as badly as everybody feared which is also great news but coming to emerging markets and developing economies china is doing worse than expected its growth has been downgraded and this has a lot of ramifications for the global economy on various counts it can impact india also in various on various counts but that said there are also some headwinds for india and the global economy there's debt there's the looming specter of inflation because of these various wars that are happening commodity prices are likely to rise and it will likely impact india in terms of higher inflation which means our interest rates will remain high which means borrowing costs will remain high borrowing costs for everybody involved government corporates and you and me so there are also various structural reforms that india needs to make to strengthen its growth and make it even more resilient to things that are happening in the world as radhika pointed out we can't control what's happening outside but within india we can do various things to ensure that our growth remains resilient and strong but on that note that's all we have for you thank you so much for watching